How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our next EIGRP topic, which is going to be the timers. So how important is this? Well, it depends on the implementation and stuff like that, pardon me. So there's a couple of different timers that we need to be aware of, okay? The very first one is going to be the hello. So think of this like you walk into a room and you say hello, right? And other people hear you and respond with, hi, how are you, hello back, things like that. This is an, a send and receive acknowledgement. So if I send a hello out and you hear it and you send a hello back and I hear it, that means we can see, we can talk to each other, right? Well, routers do this in order to dynamically discover and eventually form adjacencies with each other. So it's a very simple process in terms of the operations. Now by default, EIGRP uses a default hello interval of five seconds. So you have that five second hello and the hold time, which is the other portion of the timer value, is set to 15 seconds. So basically three five second hello intervals. So if you, in the event that you don't hear a hello from a, another peer, for 15 seconds, you're going to declare that neighbor down. So they've, the whole time has expired, you're no longer going to trust that that neighbor is still up and you're gonna bring it down. So that's where that active neighbor adjacency thing I was talking about in the introductory video, that's where that comes into play. So timer wise, very, very easy to work with. You don't really even have to mess with it, but it's really important to understand the details of how it comes into play. Now there are ways to modify it and things like that and there's some additional capabilities and stuff like that we'll briefly discuss but we're not going to go into actually de uh, deploying them. So let's kind of talk about what some of these other options are. Now one of the key things is you don't actually need to have the timers match. So like OSPF you do, they, they, they have to, the hello and dead intervals do match. With EIGRP it doesn't need to match. In the event that something happens and the route goes away or the neighbor goes down, any routes that were learned from that neighbor. So for example, if something happens here, let me change my color over to red. If this link right here goes down, then any routes that were learned in from iOS 6 will then be removed from the topology table and then from the routing table as well. Now, you might say, why do you remove them? Okay, why do you remove routes if the neighbor has gone down? Well, it's kind of an obvious reason, but every once in a while I do get the question, like why do you remove the routes? Can't they just stay there and in the hopes that that neighbor comes back online? And the answer is no because if you leave something in the routing table or in the topology table that doesn't actually have a destiny, a way to get there, it's like, it, number one, it becomes stale information. It's no longer reachable. Number two, you don't want to keep something in the routing table and have traffic hit the, uh, that needs to reach that destination via that path and not be able to get there. That's called what they refer to as black holing and we don't want to have that. So there are cases where you want to avoid that wherever possible. And that's why whenever a neighbor adjacency goes down, any routes that were learned from that neighbor are also removed. So to prevent the accidental flooding of information where it doesn't, want to, doesn't need to go. So that's, that's basically how that comes into play. So just some of those details that I think is really, really important for you guys to understand in terms of the operations, because if something does happen, I wanna make sure that you guys understand that it goes down, you don't wanna have it hanging around just to hang around for the sake of hanging around, right? We don't wanna end up having routes linger and then users are going, well, I can't reach that web server anymore or I can't reach SharePoint or I can't get to this or I can't get to that. You wanna avoid those situations at all costs. Now, specifically to any routes that do linger and things like that, um, not everything is removed right away. So. What that basically means is if the um, if a route to a destination is lost, so for example, let's say I'm there's a, a LAN segment hanging off of iOS 1, just for the sake of argument, and 
um, I lose one of my paths. Now initially, you're going to go out and try to find another way to get there. So we haven't really talked about reconvergence yet, um, but I don't want to give too much away. But in the event that something goes away, you know, a route is no longer reachable, what will end up happening is the EIGRP process will go into a try to figure it out mode and where a what they refer to as a query or a request for information will go out. So the query, I'm just going to use Q for short, is sent out any active neighbors. So it doesn't matter if that neighbor actually has reachability to it or not because the local device lost reachability to a particular destination network regardless of its size and it can't it doesn't actually have anything right now. So it's going, oh crap, I lost this route. So it's immediately going to send out queries to everybody and say, hey, do you know how to get to this route? Do you know how to get to this destination? Do you have another alternative path that I'm not aware of currently? And that's gonna go out to everybody. And then that's gonna go out this way, then that's gonna go out that, this way, so on and so forth. Then eventually what will end up happening is you'll get replies back in. Those replies will come back in with information stating yes or no. And if it's yes, great, um, then we can go ahead and update the, the configuration so you know, we have an alternative path. No means, okay, well, you actually don't have another way of getting there, so therefore, we're gonna actually remove those routes from the routing table and from the topology table. And these are things that you need to think about when you're designing your network of, uh, okay, with the, the way that the network is laid out right now, the removal process should be pretty straightforward because we, we know about everything. But if you have a much larger environment that sprawls a very large, uh, a very large geographic area, depending on how it's laid out. So an example of this would be basically like this. Eventually, we will have a couple of different locations that will act as hubs, okay? So let's say we have this is our HQ location right here, and this would maybe our DC, right? So this will be hub one here, and this will be hub two. And at the DC location, this will be hub one, and this will be hub two, right? Well, what we could have is we could have multiple tunnels going out to different, uh, different spokes that we're going to be connecting to. And what that would allow us to do is set up something like this, where we have lots of flexibility in terms of the operations and capabilities and stuff like that. So it gives us room to grow. Now in an event like this, if my EIGRP domain was very, very large and it took time for a query message to go from point A to point B, then that might come into play and you might need to run in, you might run into problems where you go from passive to active. Now we didn't spend a ton of time on passive and, and active when we were verifying the EIGRP topology. So I want to take a minute or two here and, and go over those details. The idea is actually relatively straightforward. When the moment you go and send a query out to for to out to all your neighbors to find a particular destination network from your neighbors, whether or not they have one is irrelevant. You're still going to send it. If you send it out and the query goes out, there's going to be an active timer, right? The active timer kicks uh, turns on and then it looks for these routes that's what when that timer expires and i believe it's three minutes but don't quote me on that when that timer expires and you have not received anything back yet that's what they refer to as stuck and active or sia so basically think of it like this i don't know how to reach something so i call you to do to ask do you know how to get to it and i call you and maybe you're like, oh, let me go ask Jim, or let me, and then Jim goes and asks Tim, and so on and so forth. If I'm still waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and you never get back to me, I'm actively waiting for you to do something, and you never get back to me, I'm stuck and active. Those things do come into play. I don't recommend that, um, it, well, I can't actually recommend anything. Um, if you run into a reconvergence event and you are seeing stuck in actives, that's usually an indication that the network has sprawled too large and the time frame it takes from the initial query to get sent out and then the reply to that query to come back to you, if that goes beyond that three minute window, 
that's a problem, right? And we want to make sure we mitigate those things. So in situations like that, if your network is too big, it might be time to start bringing it down into little, to much smaller EIGRP autonomous systems. So would that change the way that the routing table looks? Yes, because then you'd have to redistribute from like one AS to another AS, or maybe implement uh, summarization so you're not trying to query a thousand different routers. So if you get into a very large environment, it's very possible that you could have tens of thousands of routers deployed. Can EIGRP scale that big? Yes and no. Depends on the platform that you have in play and how it's designed. I don't recommend going that large, but hey, you never know. So the idea now is to take into consideration in the event that there's a failure, that you take those failures into consideration and I get an idea of how long does it take from point A to point B. You might have to look at logs and um, Wireshark captures and other details to figure out is the network optimized or is there a problem somewhere that I need to rectify? Very rarely have I ever seen stuck in actives and it's usually on very, very slow speed links. Like really old, like frame relay circuits that were less than one megabit per second. And then you're having to send all this traffic across it and then it's taking time for the router to process it. Maybe the router's not very strong. In modern networks today on some of the newer platforms that are out today, the likelihood of you seeing stuck in actives and query messages not getting replied to in my experience, it's pretty unlikely, but you still might. So that's basically how that comes into play. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this looks on the command line real quick. We can adjust the, the timer values and go from there. So what we want to work on here on router one, we'll go ahead and play around with the actual configs. If we do a show IP EIGRP interfaces gig zero slash zero detail, or is it detail or is it EIGRP neighbors? Neighbors um, detail for gig zero slash zero. There we go. That's what I'm looking for right here. Uh, actually, no, that is not right. I'm looking for uh, EIGRP interfaces detail gig zero slash zero. Here we go. Here we go. So it's an interface specific thing. That's one thing you want to keep in the back of your mind is we have the hello interval is five and the whole time is 15, right? So meaning that we are going to send hellos every five seconds until the whole time is reached. So if I send a hello every five seconds, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna wait three, send it three times. If I don't get anything back, I'm gonna consider the neighbor down. And these are the things that you need to think about when you're designing. So how important is that? I mean, Right now, we're, we have a default of th 5 and 15. Do we need to go anything shorter than that? You could, but just remember anything that you go too short on is going to increase the CPU. So these are just a couple things to keep in the, the back of your mind. How do you change these variables? Very, very simply. You go to the interface, so interface gig 0 slash 0, and you type in IP EIGRP, or is it EIGRP, um, IP it is hello interval hello interval hello interval for EIGRP and then we can for the process number of AS100 and seconds between hello transmissions is going to be let's say we drop this down to three and then hit the enter key and then we do the hold time for EIGRP would be 100 and then the number of um, seconds before neighbors considered down. So seconds before neighbors considered down. So we did three seconds, we'll say nine. So it'll be just triple it, right? And hit the enter key. So do show run interface gig zero slash zero. We can see that we're setting the hello interval to be three seconds and the hold time to be nine for AS100. So do show IP EIGRP interfaces detail for gig zero slash zero. And we can see now that the hello interval is set to uh, three and nine. Three second hello and a hold time of nine. Could you go anything lower than that? I'm sure you probably could. Um, as you can see here, when we were looking at the configs, you can go as low as uh, 
one second for each, right? So do I, do I recommend doing that? No, and I don't recommend you doing a one and a zero. So hello of one and a whole time of zero, which would actually cause the neighbor adjacency to fail because you're not giving enough time for the response to come back in. If you did one and one, that'd be okay. There are other things to talk, think about. We'll talk about BFD here in a little, in a, uh, a little bit later, bi-directional forwarding detection, how that comes into play, but right now we're not terribly, uh, I'm not terribly worried about getting that process done. So, um, so that's basically where we are in terms of, of that. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the timers. Uh, let me go ahead and do this on iOS XR as well, just so you guys can see it. So on XR3, we'll go ahead and log into XR3, go to global config, and then we'll type in router EIGRP AS100. We'll go to uh, address family IPv4, and then we'll type in interface of gig 0000, and then underneath here we'll specify the hello interval of three and the hold time of nine. Again, they don't have to match. They don't. They don't have to. But in this case here, if we do a show config, we can see what we're typing in. And if we do show EIGRP interface, uh, let's see. Does it allow me to do a detail? I don't know if it's going to do a, de a detail for uh, gig zero 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 zero. We can see that it's five and fifteen, right? Beautiful. So we have that. We're going to go ahead and we'll commit the config. So now if we do that same command again, now we can see it's three and nine. So excellent. It's working as expected. So that's how you would change the values if you wanted to change them. Pretty simple stuff when you start bringing, boiling it down to brass tacks. That's where the timers come into play. Um, maybe you want to bump them up to be higher. Uh, that's also a possibility. Or maybe you have a longer hold time. The one beautiful thing about doing this type of stuff is when you are playing around with it, there's technically no wrong way to approach this, right? It's whatever you need to put into play in order to make EIGRP work the way you need it to in the environment you're deploying it in. That's the, I think the rule, one of the big things that a lot of people miss is they are uh, all about super tight constraints, right? They want it to fast detection of the failure and fast propagation of reconvergence. Those are all great things, but if your environment doesn't need those type of those super tight network tolerances, why implement them? So um, I'm not against people having really quick reconvergence. I mean, most, pe most engineers wanna see that type of stuff, but at the end of the day, no environment that you're gonna work inside of is the CCA lab. So, um, Keep that in, in consideration when you're going out and deploying what it is that you're trying to roll out. Maybe super tight tolerances may be detrimental to the environment. So just keep that type of logic in your brain. So I did, I'd rather you understand how this stuff works and be like, okay, maybe, maybe this isn't such a good idea. Maybe I don't want to have super tight tolerances. Maybe I want to open it up and give myself more flexibility. I would rather you take advantage of the knowing how to adjust the timers to meet the need of the, the environment and meet the business objectives versus being like, well, we need to have them really, really tight and so the reconvergence is super fast. Okay, EIGRP is already pretty fast, let's be real. So do you need to go any faster than that? And if you do, fine, that, I'm okay with that. But don't make it so fast that it potentially causes problems in other areas of the network. So what might those be? It could be a number of things. I'm not gonna get into that here because every network is its own, each an individual snowflake, and you need to take those attributes and variables into, into play. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.